Hello everybody, I am at Ignite 2019 with about 24,000 of my closest friends, including David here. And David, we are hanging out at your booth and what's going on with Veronis at Ignite 2019? Well, hey Brad, thanks for, uh, thanks for having us. Um, a lot of stuff is going on with Veronis. We're helping organizations get visibility into where their most important data lies, who has access to it, who's using it, who might be using data in, un in an unusual way, Interesting. helping them reduce access yep. and see and respond to threats more efficiently. So are you talking like insider threats at this point when you say people using data inappropriately? Well, a lot of times insiders are things that light up our set, yeah. our software but you know what we also see is that outside attackers routinely compromise insider accounts when they get in and so it doesn't really matter whether it's an outside attacker or an insider usually the end of the story is data yeah and when you've got an insider that's using data in an unusual way for them that's something interesting that people want to know about when you've got an outside attacker that compromises an internal user and then uses those credentials to move around and get access to data, that's something that our software will help you help you find out about. And the interesting thing is, guess how many files the average oh. user has access to? I will take a guess, but I, I suspect I'm going to be well, I would say like 2,500 maybe. 17 million. So, I mean, you know, if you <laughs> round up... <laughs> we, 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 uh, that comes from about uh, uh, about 800 risk assessments or so, and we, really? we do that we do that for companies. We, it takes about 90 minutes to install, and we'll look at a sample of your data. And out of the the risk assessments that we found, the average, and and we didn't even look at everybody's or all the data. Mm -hmm. um, out of the data we looked at, the average employee had access to 17 million files, most of which they don't need access to. Sure. So think about that. One employee decides to break bad. Think about how much data they have access to. One compromised account, ransomware. Think of the, mm. the risk scope that you've got there. So that's one of the things that I think we need to help people understand yeah. is how much risk is inside their organization. Yeah, I mean, that that is a lot more than I, like I was thinking high end maybe 100,000, but that is, that is that is crazy. So let's talk about how does your product work then? Like how do you get this information? How does a customer get onboarded? You know, what, what's the process here? Sure, so it's uh, off the shelf software. As I said, very quick install. Uh, installs on Windows, on Prem or in the cloud, doesn't matter where. Uh, once we're installed, we actually learn more about data than any other technology out there. So we do that by, of course, understanding Active Directory. That's simple. That's like an LDAP query that you can do. But we then map the file systems. So all the folders, all the access control lists on your Windows servers, your Unix servers, your NAS devices, on SharePoint, on Exchange, on Office 365, to yeah. send in all those containers and map that information back to the Active Directory data, Active okay. Directory users. So then you can see who can access data. So for any data set, who can touch it, for any user or group, what can they touch? Mm -hmm. We also track the access activity, so who's actually touching the data, who's opening, creating, deleting, moving, modifying files, who's sending emails to whom, who's marking them as unread. Um, that is actually a, a pretty interesting data set. Think about it, if you're gonna try to detect credit card fraud, you need the credit card transactions. Yep. These are the data transactions that you need to understand unusual access to data. And we're really, I think, the best technology to understand on all these data stores who's actually accessing the files. So now we have who can access data, who does access data. We put that together to see where people have too much access. We add in classification information. So we go inside the data to find regulated content, stuff that's subject to privacy regulations like GDPR or CCPA. Put that in context. Now we know where the most important data is, where it's at risk, and who needs access to it based on their usage. We've taken this further. We now uh, take in more active directory telemetry to see when attackers potentially are moving around doing lateral movement, privilege escalation, the things that they do prior to getting access to data. Okay. And we also have extended out to the perimeter. We're looking at web proxies, DNS, uh, and VPN so that we can see when attackers are potentially getting in or when malware lands. Now with the AD and the data, you see the attackers moving around, getting access to data, and we see them taking it out through a DNS tunnel or just uploading it to a, like yeah. a webmail, uh, you know, 
personal web mail. So that's a lot of data. That's a lot of data for somebody to review. How does the end user or the IT pro or whoever actually make sense of all this data that you're collecting? Sure. Well, the, one of the first things we do is we help prioritize the risk. So when we can see, you know, one out of every five folders, that's where these 17 million files come from. One out of every five folders is open to a group like everyone, authenticated yeah. users, domain users, global access groups. Mm -hmm. So we can start to prioritize that and then folders that are just open to way too many people through larger groups, right, as well. So imagine the union of sensitive data with accessibility or oversubscribed data mm -hmm. and important data. So that's a good way to prioritize. But what we do find is that in order to solve these problems at scale, you need automation. Okay. So what we've been able to do is by combining this analysis with a really good, what we call a commit engine, the ability to make changes back to these file systems, yep. we've been able to take what was an impossible process, fixing a folder open to everybody in the company, usually nobody did it, it was a career limiting maneuver, right? Mm -hmm. People would say, I don't know who I'm gonna cut off, I might get fired, or, you, yeah. know, you know, gonna break something. They wouldn't do it. We used to say, listen, if you had to do it, you had to like turn on native auditing, had to go try to figure out who probably would have access to this. How long would it take for one folder? Eight hours. Wow. Now with Data Advantage, which is our flagship product, for years we would we would get that down to 15 minutes a folder. So hmm. we'd do a simulation. Okay, if I pulled this group six months ago, who would have called up to help, help us screaming? Because yeah. I took away their access and they've been using the data. With the automation engine, which is a newer offering, we can now do a whole server in 15 minutes. So we are remediating wow. hundreds of thousands of these folders in a night based on this automated simulation. And really that's one of the first phases in our operational journey, sure. which is let's make sure we take the real low hanging fruit in terms of risk, transform that, then we can get better. Most people have uh, permissions that have evolved in crazy yeah. ways for years. So let's rationalize those, restructure those so they're uniform, regroup, right group at the top of the tree, flows down, inheritance mm -hmm. works. There, are, you know, There's no broken uh, inheritance that's or malfunctioning inheritance, that yeah. also happens. Uh, then we can align those rationalized shares with the right data owner based on usage, okay. right? And other attributes like the managed by field and active directory, and then start to put them in power to make even better decisions. Hey, here's who's in your group that probably doesn't need to have access. They look like they've moved to another role, right? We use analytics for that. Yeah. And they can make those decisions and then the automation affects the changes that they want to make. Interesting. So then who is your target customer here? Is it the small business, medium business, large enterprise? You know, who's an ideal Verona's client? We, uh, we're relevant for any company that has more than 20 employees and uses files and emails. So, sizable you know, population. That's a sizable population. Well, if any of those that, those companies that have more twenty one employees and plus uh, want to get started, what's how, talk about onboarding with Veronis? How do you guys get people up and running in the in the business model? How do they pay the licensing and all that? Sure. So uh, if you go to veronis.com slash demo, I believe, or at least veronis.com, you'll you'll be able to see where you can get a demo or start a risk assessment. Yep. Uh, it's a it's a it's free to okay. try the software. Uh, very quick install, uh, and then we have a couple different licensing options for for getting started with low barriers to entry. It's it's uh, software. So cool. Well, we will make sure to include that link down below for everybody who's watching, make it easier to head on over to Veronis. But David, we very much appreciate your time hanging out here at Ignite 2019. Everybody else, hit that subscribe button, and we'll catch everyone else right back here next time.